ice to ant mini case. So if you've seen this case before, you know what this is. If you haven't seen it, you're not going to know what it is. I will give you a hint, this is a congenital case. So I just scroll through it once on the coronal reformations. I think there's a pretty obvious finding in the left lung. I mean, it's so obvious that I might as well zoom up on it so you can have a better look at what's going on there. I'll pop into soft tissue window and level as well. density here. Make sure my measurements are right. Is minus 10 Hounsfield units, so very, very close to fluid density. Here it is in the axial plane. Okay, so as most of you have probably figured out, this is a pretty classic case of bronchial atresia. You have this huge swath of hypodensity involving the majority of the left upper lobe, if not most of the left upper lobe. Well, not all of it. There, there's some of the left upper lobe which certainly does not seem to be involved here, but large swath of the left upper lobe. And then more proximally, you have these branching areas one of them partially calcified, which on soft tissue window, again, had low density, so very close to fluid. Remember this Hounsfield unit here in this area was about minus 10 Hounsfield units, so pretty classic bronchial atresia. Sometimes people ask me, well, how, how are you so sure they're bronchi? Well, you can follow the airways into them, or you can remember, sometimes even if the bronchial atresia is so proximate, you can't really follow an airway into it, um, I think in this situation, this one right here, can follow an airway right into it. So more proximally, there's a little airway that goes right into it, right in there. And then you get this branching, peripherally calcified lesion, which represents uh, an area of bronchial dilation with internal mucus plugging. But in some cases, for example, like this one, more central, this area of bronchial treason, you're just plugging more centrally. It's kind of hard to figure out where the bronchus is that leads into it. And obviously you can use coronal reformations, sagittal reformations, use minips to try to follow the airways. It can be a little bit challenging, but I think one little trick that you can certainly use is to remember that the bronchi and the pulmonary artery tr branches travel together. So we see a pulmonary artery branch here going right into this area of branching morphology. And so and it looks like, you know, even without contrast, that vessel looks to be a little eccentric to this area of actual branching abnormality. Right? So here, following it centrally, here's that pulmonary artery branch. And then you get this little bump there. So it looks like this branching doesn't come from the center of this pulmonary artery branch. It comes adjacent to it. So that certainly would be consistent with an airway related traveling with that adjacent pulmonary artery. So simple anatomy, remembering your first year anatomy is very helpful in some of these situations. But classic case of bronchial atresia usually does involve the left upper lobe.